Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And I'm Tom Scholey. We are the three Pittsburgh Grand Designers when it comes to Marvel Comics, and we are proposing the Marvel Grand Design Artist Edition today here on Cartoonist Kayfabe. I guess we could also call it the Cartoonist Kayfabe Artist Edition, huh, fellas? That's Man, right. A lot of ways to skin this cat. But first, I want to invite you guys to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so that we can notify you when fresh videos are available. And that helps mitigate the kayfabe effect, which is what happens whenever we talk about a comic, put a video out in the morning, by midday, early afternoon, early evening, the stuff we talk about often disappears off of uh, the secondhand market, eBay, Amazon, comic book uh, online retailers. So the people see the videos the earliest, get first dibs on the cheapest copies. Also, if you watch these videos to the end, that helps uh, push our YouTube videos out to other uh, audience members who might be interested in it. And we are doing our best to uh, enhance the uh, subscriber base for the channel. We hit 61,000 subscribers recently, but it's only 10% on, on the way to the 6.1 million that we've uh, been trying to hit uh, for these past three years, man. So we need your help along the way to do that. But fellas, here it is, dude. Maybe we also call this video, what? $2 million worth of artwork sitting on the table <laughs> yeah, right nice. now? Yeah, this is top secret, the filming of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a separate location. Right. <laughs> uh, it's all going back to our various, uh, what are those boxes in the uh, bank called, man? Security it's, deposit yeah, box? Yeah, safety deposit. Safety deposit boxes. Uh, but yeah, cracked open the archives and, uh, you know, what a cool idea, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the Grand Design Artist Edition. We are big fans of Artist Editions, obviously. CR, I think we have a playlist dedicated to Artist Editions, so that's always close to my mind. I mean, we all work on paper still, which is kind of a rarity, uh, which also lends to that idea of artist design. And part of my reason for being interested in doing an artist design is to get Tom's fantastic four art in that format because I'm always impressed by seeing this, and I don't see it enough. Your pencil art... Um, I feel like there's a real unique characteristic to that. And I think like a grand design would be perfect as an artist edition because we could each have a third of the book. Yeah. You know, so about 50 pages each to do with as we want. There's a bunch of cool covers that go with this series. I have a Fantastic Four cover. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of ways that we could put together, I think, a very cool version of an artist edition with the grand design materials as a starting point. This This would be like an artist edition with the most variety of any so far did you do tom a uh, like an initial drawing one of the first things that that i think of grand design and this would have to be in there maybe as end pages ed is you had done an art uh like all the x-men on tiers you know like four tiers of the different x-men teams through the years i remember that tore up social media and kind of uh started the conversation of a grand design to begin with when they wanted a proposal from me i remember you were like do a drawing as part of it. So this was my initial Hulk drawing that went with my Hulk proposal. And I've got a few of those. When you talk about variety, Tom, there's a lot that we'd be bringing in this. Pencil drawings, ballpoint pen, bring a little bit of color to it, uh, ink on paper and that traditional drawing comics method. Um, I think it would just, we could make a beautiful art book out of this material. Let's shotgun through some stuff, man. I, you puffed up uh, Tom's stuff. Let's, let's handle that at, at the end. Okay, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The highlight. I like the that. highlight. And uh, let's let's just uh, go through stuff real quick, right? Yeah, man, start flipping. So I'll, I'll be super fast. These are various couple. What, Tom, well, I love your stand. And and you even made his uh, hairline asymmetrical. His bad <laughs> plugs is, is completely accurate. And I drew it. It's not like a hairline that starts with hairs. It's literally just like a line that comes across because that, that it's is like a helmet. It's like tucked under. It's like folded. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a helmet, you know? It's, it's, it's like when you're laying carpet and then you kind of staple the corners down. Oh, yeah, and I'm a cheapo, right? So I let her on the back of my stuff. That's kind of cool. Love like, it. you'd have to include at Kirby, least, like, Kirby one piece of this. this. Surprint was uh, one of the things that that uh, is on my mind with those artist editions. And I like when they take, like, the image on a piece of vellum, and you can, like, lift yes. it and show mm -hmm. it off. So I'd like to do some of that. Yeah, now you're talking. I saw this cover in progress, and that was one of my thoughts, is, like, that would be so cool in those pieces. I was trying a lot of different process stuff, so a lot of my work doesn't have panel borders or the lettering, and often it's on the back because of just the way I was putting this stuff together. Yeah, you were streamlining your process for, I for think, speed. I think, I think it was uh, actually adding time to my thing yeah. Yeah, upon reflection. This would be like an interesting thing to try to get across, uh, mm -hmm. and also I didn't spot blacks. On a lot of my original art, because I was trying to, I was trying to work for yeah. speed, and I was maybe going to spot the blacks for this video, but I'm like, fuck it, I'm a busy man. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is scanned in, and then I like pixelated it, 
so that it made it, the final image look like a uh, like an ink wash. Yeah. And I stitched this stuff underneath this image to try to create that photograph. Mm -hmm. It'd be fun to try to figure out how you represent that. Uh, you know, if it is an overlay or something. Right. Yeah. And the artist edition would be really cool. And one nice thing with these pages, I like seeing the blue. Yeah. You know, I like that incomplete part because, again, that's what I want in yeah. an artist edition. Th those are my favorite parts of the artist edition yeah. is where you see the seam. So the unspotted blacks, I feel like, would be something I'd be way into in an you, artist edition. You know what's interesting? When I sell pages... I love this stuff. Too. Yeah, I have it on every page. When I sell pages, uh, I always offer to spot, put the blacks in there. Zero people have ever taken me up on yeah. it. Zero people. They always wanted to just like be, be the you, way it you was. You want to see behind the curtain. And my least favorite artist editions are the ones that are too perfect. Yes. I I was wondering... Crop marks for where it would go inside of see, the panel borders. That would look really good. You know, as an artist edition, that pops. You get a little bit of the blue line on the page, but then you would get those crop marks. The second Genesis stuff was drawn twice up, so I just worked like in half-page chunks that would take the in, entire 11 by 17 piece of paper. Uh, more cover stuff. Yeah, those are nice. That cover piece, would you do stuff like, um, would, I would this be an overlay for you or would it be two facing pages? Like, like I would, I would want the overlay. Yeah. And yeah, then, and like, overlays like, like, like the back or something, man. <laughs> Gotta love, Mazza Kelly just, uh, spoiled us, I think. With yeah, that right. <laughs> Born again piece. I love revisit. It's been a while since I read this stuff. It's it's fun revisiting it. Yeah, yeah and I just have I have so much more genial because because it's just quicker to test it out there than to like move your hand over. Like I could have inked three lines by the time like I move my hand over. You know, one of the things I was thinking of too, if we were going to do this, is to have like um you know like you mentioned not having blacks, but to set up that black border. You know, especially yeah. on a page without blacks, it'd be really striking and dramatic. And there, if you look at artist editions, they have that gutter. They have that that marginalia around it. You could tell how cheap I am with this shit because because it is like the lettering for this page. That, this is what together. it is to be a pro. And and what and what I did like the reason I did this was because I wanted a lot of opportunity to just like yes. write more dialogue. And yeah. and there's a lot of places where I did that. I like this page just for like the mania of this panel here, like how mm -hmm. tight that is. See, here's the great thing you can do, too. If we had three of us doing it, we would have, like, chapter breaks, and we could blow up a panel for that, like, the title page yeah. of the chapter breaks. Again, one of the details I love in artist editions. I included a cover for uh, Rob Liefeld. I, I can't find my uh, whole, I mean, my Fantastic Four Grand Design uh, cover. Like, I have it sitting around somewhere, but just, like, a lot of manga lines on this one. Yeah, I like the manga lines. Boom. This is a page that I think is really striking. Yeah. The, the blacked out And again, bones. it's great seeing all the variety that's in, in a black on, on original art. I'm just going through some others, man. This is like akin to uh, to that. Preserve. If you remember, it's a two-page spread, yeah. Jim Lee, with yeah. like a citadel in the back. And when you see it in the final version, when it's all colored, it all makes sense. But just the color, that took like a long time. That might be a good blow-up panel. I was also trying to figure out, like, what is what is the kayfabe rules of an artist edition? Like, could we be doctoring our pages? Could we make them a little bit yellow? Is, is that <laughs> I, stuff okay? I, I don't need to doctor mine because mine is yeah. old enough that I have, like, a lot of, like, That's skin oils and shit on my thing. Yeah, like, yeah, th there's enough built-in noise. There's one for your blue. I had this idea. If we actually got an artist edition out of this video or, or whatever, you know, if it comes to pass, because we all live in the same spot, I thought... We bring in Sean Michael Robinson for a weekend to, to oversee the scanning because yeah. we're all in one location. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of that. You know, like that would be one of the, the uh, opportunities we'd have. In the second Genesis book, I also like worked on a bunch of different layers all on paper. But I wanted the backgrounds to be a different black than the foreground characters. That's the mania. And nobody understand. Like mm -hmm. you don't even see it really. No. So uh, this was a TV screen and it's a different black than like the main figures that's a really i, I know that panel it's really straight great. yeah here's that uh, the greatest story ever told <laughs> <laughs> and just like the multitude of line is like i think what you're going to get from from my contribution is just like all the this level of like ink detail that multitude of line, that difference in, in approach, is another reason why yes. I want this book to happen. Mm -hmm. Because I think showing off, being from the same place, coming up at about the same time, yeah. I feel like our approaches are all really different, and I like yes. that. 
So yes. putting it all in one book would showcase that kind of different approaches to uh, you know to how we build these comics. So that's the Eddie P pitch. Jimmy, let's go through some of your stuff, man. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. If you want to support Cartoonist Kayfabe, pick up our comic books. Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness is my latest comic. It's in comic shops everywhere right now. A retelling of the 60-year history of The Incredible Hulk featuring me as writer, artist, colorist, letterer. This is my version of the Hulk paying homage to some of the great cartoonists that have come before me. Pick this up wherever you buy comics. Red Room Trigger Warnings, now available in comic shops everywhere. Banned in 23 countries and 11 comic shops but even those comic shops that ban it can pick it up for you. You can pre-order or may be able to pull it out from underneath the counter. Murder on the Dark Web for fun and profit. This is the second season, but every issue is self-contained. So whichever one you come across, pick it up. It's the perfect, complete story in each issue. And the Antisocial Network is the collection of the first season of Red Room. Again, available wherever you pick up your comics. Jimmy, can we look at that backdrop before we get out of here? All right, we're done paying the bills, man. Uh, let's get back to the video. I'm bringing a couple of new pieces here. Again, talking about variety, like I have a bunch of these corner boxes and some of them are very conventional, you know? Now, Jim, this this is something I was going to bring up. I think for like the blow-ups where you go in real close, it's great to take something super detailed and blow it up and then something super simple and blow it up. Like both of those are really effective. Yeah, so I did all the corner boxes and I believe you guys did a bunch of corner boxes yeah. and I thought... Maybe a cover is a bunch of these corner boxes. That way we'd all be represented and all the characters uh, would be mm -hmm. represented on a cover. So that was one idea I had there. I also brought uh, a couple of these notebook pieces just to show off, you know, like my, my yeah. 181 cover now, recreation. That was previous to this project or you did this for the project? This is for the project because like I knew this had to be represented. It's one of the most famous Hulk comics. Yeah. How do you do it in a way that's fresh and different? And it's like... I, I'm sure I copied that as well whenever I was a kid. So, you know, it's almost like callback to that time period. And then uh, a little bit of crossover here okay. is uh, my Fantastic Four Grand Design cover. Throwing up the Four Horsemen. Mm -hmm. So, And I found these as I was pulling this out, so I just thought I'd bring them along because if we're showing off artwork, there's a bunch of it The, the thing part of that makes me laugh that he's yeah. holding up all his fingers. <laughs> it's, all, it's all he's got. We've looked at some of this stuff uh, in previous videos, so I try to keep you know, pretty quick through those pages. Yeah. But here's a page that was a mashup. It was supposed to look like stickers of all these different people uh, that the Hulk was fighting. So that was my idea for a possible overlay is, is mashing those up together. And then just some of the, uh, playing some of the hits. Ed, you talk about like the different color of black ink. This Hulk is inked with a different ink than the background. I, I don't see. know how much it shows up a little bit, maybe on camera. Um, one of my favorite issues, so I had to include that. Here's the thing, too, man. Like, when we're talking about how, how much can you kayfabe around, like, the margins for your pages are smaller than Tom and mine. Yeah, that's why I might want to blow that up. Yeah. <laughs> Again, maybe we'll cut that part oh, out of this video. This is the most amazing vein I've seen in, in oh, all yeah, of comic wow. I mean, that's thick. <laughs> yeah, it's a tree. Head veins. <laughs> This was another same deal of like, what do you do with a cover that's like the most iconic cover from the series? So I just tried to lean into, again, me in high school going sick on this stuff and just rendering Wolverine to an even more ridiculous degree. I love that we'll have uh, two versions yeah, of the same totally. kind of image. We just need Tom to do something. I like the tangent here. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty intentional. Because yeah, when you draw be, this, right, like when, when you really look at the McFarlane so close the drawing gets away from him. Like, when he's drawing the, the torso and the shoulders, it completely gets away from him. He is not drawing anything that is of this human world made of carbon and water and all that other stuff. But you have to to make it fit, a, to make yeah. it fit the right way, yeah. to have the claws and the hands line up correctly. Um, this is probably my favorite page from the book. Mm -hmm. Sick as hell. You know, no outline, so a little bit of the Frank Miller, yeah. like, overcoat kind of thing. It's just the background stuff's going to define him. Genius. And you can see the blue line on my stuff, too. These were printouts from, like, I would do my roughs on the iPad, print that out, and... Uh... <laughs> That's the pit. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, uh, you know, I just pulled a couple of pages for the sake of this video, but some of my favorites, a lot of mashing up, like, those iconic, the, the Keon Hulk... Um, silhouette cover, but then with the, the Hulk fighting inside. Funny that we both have, like, Liefeld uh, references in these pages. Got you, man. <laughs> I always like how you have that speed inking. Yeah, that is beautiful. Like, this That's kind of beautiful. stuff, man. Like, you're so good at that. Thanks, man. Is that with a brush? But this is even... Um, 
I mean, not a brush, but a but a ruler and a brush. I'll be honest, I don't remember how I inked that. I think that's a brush pen. It's all a blur. Um, but this this is like your uh, your skull, you know, your yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, skeleton totally. we saw a minute ago. And then Planet Hulk, I think, is my last last piece of my uh, offering to Scott Dumbier. Mm-hmm. This is really cool. Yeah, like, that'll you know look what? good on a scan. If mm-hmm. you look close, like that's ballpoint pen. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. If, and if you touch it, you can feel that. So hopefully, you it's know, that's visible. the thing. Whenever we scan or photograph this stuff, you got to capture those pieces, you know, to mm-hmm. be able to see that little bit of shift in color. Yeah. Well, let me take my artwork back to my room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll move this uh, this pile, Tom, and we will. Uh, this is what we came here for, right? So, so yeah, this was the. Um... This was the cover, and I wanted the cover to run as this, as, like, penciled, but, you know, Marvel didn't want that. They wanted, like, a slick, clean one, so I digitally inked it. So this is, this, but this is the, the thing I digitally inked. And then this is, this is the back cover, which, you know, the front cover is commerce, back cover you can be a little more arty with. So this one did run in its, like, pencil form like this. And, and the whole book, you know, the, the whole rest of the book, other than the front cover, was all straight from these pencils. So you get, like, all the noise and all the, you know. Tom, how much, uh, this how, is how, another how much cover. are you doing, like, underdrawing? Are you light boxing these? Like, they're so clean. Well, like you guys, I would do a little bit of digital stuff first. So I do, like, my layout digitally where I have, like, the, the basic drawing. And then I, I'd print that up. And then I'd tape it to, yep. to the back of these and then light box it onto here so yeah there's very there's like really this is almost like inking with a pencil there's no like second guessing or redrawing that the the image has already been figured out i feel like you 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 arrived at that place with like gobots or yeah gobots yeah maybe maybe like halfway through um through transformers but definitely gobots um this is the corner boxes. The corner box corner box cover yeah imagine all the corner boxes that we've drawn for the grand design arranged on a cover we're gonna be a hell of a cover we're gonna have to go like real artist edition and track some dudes down though uh but i i I think (laughs) i think they they posted a lot of my art on comic art fans like the guys who bought it so yeah i i never sold any of my mine for this so it's all there now um this i i really liked uh ed your your indicia and then then jim jim i like yours and um you know yeah it goes back to like the the john John romita stuff and I initially did one that like more closely referenced that with like a million characters doing stuff. But then I, I, it wasn't work quite working for me. And I thought, you know what, what if I did one that's like airier and is less about the characters and more about like the universe of the Fantastic Four. So it's all the different realms. It's like the Baxter building in Manhattan. It's Atlantis. It's, you know, the, the under underworld of, of uh, the mole man and um, you know, all this. And then, and then the cause, you know, Kirby Cosmic and sort of create this like, like you know, map of the universe almost. Yeah, that's really cool. It's so fun because like in one of my pages that I showed off, there's a Latveria uh, in um, in my in my art too. So there, there really is. A I, I love I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love the, the way the I love the way our works play off of each other. It's it's interesting. You know? This is a really good Human Torch, by the way. I really like the oh, way thanks. his face looks there. I got a Galactus piece that I would pull for mine also. So yeah, this Galactus. This is maybe like the money shot of the whole of the whole book is, is of my whole book, not saying the, the whole book that we're doing. And I uh, created like a Galactus glyph that kind of looks like the G, but All isn't right. the letter G, you know, you went Zack Snyder with it, man. Update the costume. Oh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. That first appearance of uh, what the hell is that dude's name? Gorgon. Yeah. The first appearance of him when he looks like real goofy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I was studying that initial drawing. It's on the splash yeah. of like the first issue. And yet it's it like talk about inhuman. Like right. it's, it's, you know, this, this like non-human. Oh man. Now see, shape. this is the stuff that speaks to me. I love seeing this. Yeah. I yeah. have a couple of pages of my logos in my portfolio that I keep with the original art. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just kept like the lettering separate. You'll see, see for some of these covers, these would be like, this is like the cover of issue one. And I would just make all the lettering separate. You can see how cool this would be as a grand design, though. To have the variety of approaches that we have visually, that's what I want yeah. in those grand, in, that's in what the, I want uh, artist editions. Yeah. That's some neat stuff, like for panel layouts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just know your uh, eyeglass prescription increases after you're drawing this <laughs> You comic. know what? To, to be honest, like going back to like college and stuff, this is like the scale I'm actually most comfortable drawing at. It's like, I don't know why. It's just like it's always it's always been the most comfortable. I think the uh, the page size is interesting. This is fourteen by seventeen. Uh, yeah, 
you know, like the standards 11 mm-hmm. by 17. Any reason for that? It's just, this is how I bought them. This is how I bought okay. the pages and, and you know, the, the, the math worked out. And yeah, this is, this is page one. And you were talking about like, oh, you know, Ed's initial drawing and your initial drawing. And for me, it was like, I did like a version of this, like purely digitally. And that, that was it. And, and, and then kind of like refined it. And it was one of those things, the same way Ed's kind of happened because he posted it on Twitter with mine. It was gonna happen and then it was in limbo for a really long time and i was like okay i guess and then i went off and did GoBots because it's like you know i wasn't hearing anything back and then i thought okay the project's dead so let me just post this stuff anyway so i posted this and then you know a couple of days later i get the phone call that okay we're you know we're on i see that's funny i seem to remember like a set of pages where like you cribbed the frank miller fuck scene yeah. from sin city and it's like mm-hmm. johnny storm getting some yeah push. it's like that one that one with gorgon a few pages back it was that so like the bottom half was Johnny Storm and Medusa fucking uh, from Frank Miller as uh, first Sin City. But like, if you notice that page, the top is like the same. And then the bottom, like I, you know, replaced with something else. It's, uh, I, I have dates on the back of all of my pages. Like when I finish them, I'll put the date on it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when I was putting everything away recently, I came across like gaps in my production where it's like, yeah. I drew the first six or seven pages and then there's a gap and it's cause we hadn't finalized the contract. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, well, a uh, couple co- months co- passed. COVID also. Well, that happens yeah. too. I have like three gaps because I have COVID happens and we shut down and I do October on of the Blacklight comic. And then I'm drawing again for another three months. And then it's like the uh, Kickstarter fulfillment. And yeah. so I've got another month <laughs> where it's like pages are down. This one got censored a little bit because there was this, I had to put clothes on people, but this is like the nude. Ver- so, so in the, in, in the um, artist edition, we'll, we'll have the, like bonus. the nude yeah, version. Yeah. You always push those boundaries, man. Like <laughs> well, uh, I remember the gr- the green uh, arrow with his cock out my, in a ghillie suit. My pitch for this was like the F in FF is for fucking. <laughs> that was my pitch, and and they so, didn't get back to you right so, away. Somewhere along the line, that element had to be you know massaged, Shocking. you know. Yeah, and then, it, and then it becomes family. But but Look yeah, at this man, the iconic panel from uh, Fantastic Four number one. Yeah, Fantastic Four number one. It's it's the That's issue cool. I went the most like microscopic with, where it's like I had as much of that as possible, and I, I was just so in love with that comic, I couldn't you know I couldn't do it, I couldn't cut. I always think of the David show, one of our conversations with him. Jeez, this is the other money shot. Like you, see, like blow that up to a two page mm-hmm. spread. Uh, artist that can be the end size. Do you Beautiful. hit? Do you hit this with the electric eraser to get the stars? Never, no, no. Those are those stars are drawn. That's really awesome looking, man. Um, but I always think of David show that one conversation of like, you got to be pushing it. You know, you have to have those editors pull something off or you're not trying. You're yeah. Not yeah. No, it's, it's off. your duty. It's your duty. This is a fun effect too. Whenever you're crossing over panels, mm-hmm. I never remember this, what that's. This name was like was. a later page in the story. And it was one of the few times I kind of like back filled like a, a gap or whatever. So uh, like I was having a lot, a lot of fun with that particular moment. Magic school bus. Inside the body. Yeah, yeah, and so the, instead of going into the negative zone to cure uh, Sue's uh, childbirth problems, they actually go in into the womb, and and there's Franklin, and they go and they got they got to you know work their their whammy on baby on uh, the unborn Franklin. And here's Sue taking her pregnancy test <laughs> and uh, bumming out. And there's, you know, some, uh, you know, for you wrestling fans, we got some. It almost act, looks like Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Yeah, that's uh, that's Bane and Batman. Man, some great perspective in some of these panels. That's cool to see, like, the X-Men and the Avengers and stuff showing up. It almost looks like a dick, like when Ditko, Ditko was doing yes. wrong. That's what I was thinking of when I was working and, on and it. And Voltron, what's, uh, what's yeah, happening? Yeah, that's... That's the fun shit. Like, <laughs> like, like, that, like, this is where stuff becomes just a total Tom comic. Yeah. And yeah, one for you, like, one for me. It's like Megazords and shit. Mm-hmm. Here's here's you know, uh, the the black Spider-Man suit uh, debacle. Here's Secret Wars. It's like s- some parts of this are like what Marvel stuff matters to me. Yeah, right? exactly. And so fit, fitting that stuff in, and the uh, Secret, Secret Wars, Wars toys, toys dude, with, <laughs> the, with the hologram shield. Yeah, <laughs> you remember that shit, right, Jimmy? I no. bought no toys. No, and, and this is actually the final page, so. Yeah, it's interesting to think of, like, which pages would go into, you know, if you have 50 pages to, to my, work with. Mine is an artist in addition. My, yeah, mine okay. will not be linear. Like, you could yeah. fit a whole issue of uh, right. either of your stuff. Yeah, ours are shorter. Yeah. But, but, well, I mean, mine are the same size, but, oh, like, okay. I just work, like, on 
it could be five pieces of paper for one page of comics, the way that I stitch things in and redraw stuff. So so my stuff has to be an artist in addition, but you guys could opt to put like an entire issue of something. This is amazing. This is when I met Steve Ditko. I made a comic about that. This was early in uh, Kayfabe, right? Weren't we talking yeah. about this? And I think you showed uh, yeah, some of these panels yeah. on, a, on a video when you were telling the story. So good. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm very excited at the idea, if we actually did one of these, of like putting it together, I think would be really exciting. Heck because yeah. it'd be the same deal as like you say, you know, which parts are important to you when you do the grand design. Mm -hmm. Well, like, what do we love in artist editions? Yeah. You know, that's what you'd be trying to pull out and, and, and make sure that we get to. And then you slide a go bot in there. <laughs> yeah, and just, who's going to know the just difference? Just to keep people honest. <laughs> Tom, is this. Um, love doing the cutaways. So you did go bots in this style. Yeah, I did GoBots like bef like right before this, and like GoBots like with GoBots, it was like I was talking to Marvel and stuff, and they weren't committing. And I'm like, look, guys, I need to hear something soon. If you don't set, tell me something soon, I'm gonna have to go off and do GoBots. Please don't make me do GoBots. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that part. I love Go. I like the GoBots more than I like the Fantastic Four, to be honest. But but it was like you know, and, and so I had to go off and do GoBots. Because they weren't committing. What is this guy? What's this? Let me man? see what this is. This might that's, be that's a, a thing. sensor. Yeah, maybe like I need. I wanted to fit the thing into one of these moments, and I like forgot to draw them. So yeah, I, I drew that's this. So thing funny. In one of these. Okay, so here's a marching orders, man. Gay Fabers, you need to put that energy out there into the universe. <laughs> uh, we need a Marvel grand design. We're gonna need a sex magic act to get this thing off the ground. <laughs> yes. Yes. Grant Morrison, are you listening? So picture, <laughs> picture Sue or Reed Richards the next time. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how it works? I, I don't know. <laughs> Super fun, man. Uh, really cool to go through this stuff with you. Jimmy, you, you brought up the idea of a Marvel grade design, and, and I was, like, fully on board. Uh, now, somebody has... Like, there's a million companies doing these uh, these artist edition type books. I have one through Fantagraphics, Genesis, West, DC Gallery editions. So there are options out there, mm -hmm. you know? If IDW can't muster it, maybe Marvel themselves will be the ones to, uh, to publish this sucker. And while you're at it, let Jimmy do the design work so that it doesn't suck. Absolutely, man. That, that's, that's what Jim got his Eisner for, was, was design. Yes. Not. Mistake. Yeah, working on a big oversized book, yes. by the way. So uh, I even have experience with that oversized books. But man, I, I would love that challenge. And I'm so glad we got to see these these pages. If nothing else, just having these come out of your uh, archives, Tom, and sharing them with the world because I think they're so cool looking. Let's uh, let's take this video down. Let's edit it, and then we'll make our pitch to the various publishers and see which one of them is going to bite. You guys, good to go? Yeah, that's great. Okay, favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness are both in comic shops now as you watch this video while supplies last. Retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk, paying homage to the great artists that came before me. I'm writing, drawing, coloring, lettering that. You know the Grand Design rules. And uh, so pick that up now and uh, join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg to see more of my art. Do I need to say it? Read Fantastic Four Grand Design. Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, American Barbarian. Get GoBots, too. Uh, you can uh, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show, and uh, check out my Patreon, too. Red Room Trigger Warnings 1, 2, and 3 are in stores uh, as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics, and it is uh, banned, 26 countries, banned in 10 comic shops. But you can order and pre-order future Red Room Comics at my link tree in the description below this video. You could also hit up my Patreon to read these comics digitally right now, today. Uh, three bucks will get you the archive. More than 200 pages worth of comics up there as we speak. I put up new strips every Tuesday. Jimmy, what else do we have? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Make more comics. Hold up. The marching orders are make this Marvel Grand Design happen. <laughs> my bad. And we're out.